quickly, of course, this afternoon. Now the teams are about to arrive here, and I've been rejoined up here by uh, Bob Wilson. And Jimmy Hill's come in, having been talking to the fans, Jimmy, outside, I believe. Uh, and here comes United. Some tickets uh, going at exorbitant prices, I believe, outside, weren't they? Yes, as I spoke to one lady who paid £300 for a £10 ticket, just an ordinary housewife. Um, she had the money, and then there were one or two uh, supporters of Crystal Palace out there, all painted up like Red Indians, perfectly peaceful, had come to buy their way in, but they couldn't afford the £250 each for £10 tickets that were being asked. And they said, would we make it public so that they will know? And they talked about uh, the names of clubs, which I won't reveal, being stamped on the back of the tickets that were being sold on block. Mm. They were the source of those tickets. Exactly. The clubs. Yeah. Right. There's the man, Alex Ferguson, who's uh, won the Scottish Cup a few times with Aberdeen. But this, he says, is the most important day of his life. Every time we've been on before, we've been, there's been talk about him being sacked, Des, if you remember that. We've gone through the Cup victories, and each time not only he survived, but now in his day of glory. This is, of course, the first Saturday Cup match for Manchester United this year. They played on Sundays all the way through, and we followed them all the way through. Yeah. That's Mark Hughes, who hasn't yet scored in the, in the Cup run this season. He's not my favourite player, Mark Hughes. I don't know about Bob on that. You know, I, I think it's so many moves break down on him for United. Uh, so much will depend on him being informed this afternoon. They tend to leave him up the front by himself, rather, and um, pack the midfield. And where his strength is, he scores, of, of course, goals out of nothing. At the same time, he misses good chances. He seems to want to knock the casing off the ball every time, Mark Hughes. But he does either score absolutely fantastic goals or rather squander some, some useful the bookies, chances. The um, have him as 7-1 to favourite to score today. Mm, well, if he's not scored so far, there's a good chance he might is that do John it. John Motson? He's not playing, is he? Yeah. John Motson with Brian McClare there. <laughs> he's he getting his last uh, facts and figures correct, isn't he, Motty? He hasn't got one of their suits, has he? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> John, of course, our match commentator today. Those pictures of them arriving recorded uh, just now. Uh, and this is the Crystal Palace players and the Crystal Palace captain there on the pitch and Steve Koppel. And that's uh, Ian Wright. Now, will he play? Will he start the match? The teams haven't yet been confirmed. Do you expect him to, Bob? I think he should play, Des, I really do. I think that the combination, that uh, bright and um, right, right, right combination has mm. uh, been so important to Palace in getting back into the first division um, in the playoff stage last year. And I really believe that, uh, I mean, he wouldn't be playing in a reserve team game and getting through it and scoring a goal in the past a week or so. <laughs> and I think it's very, very important for Palace this afternoon. I think it'll. I think United will be worried about it. Now, I ought to just point out that's they're the uh, England lady players who've been uh, playing a little exhibition match here against Scotland, and uh, clearly they're well known to the Crystal Palace boys. Um, yeah. We've been talking about underdogs, haven't we? We talk about Crystal Palace as the underdogs, but in a sense, um, it's a misnomer, isn't it? Because they've, they've beaten United in the league. And they've and drawn, drawn with them. them. And also, they're on exactly the same points in the first division at the end of the season. So, uh, it, the only reason it's called underdogs today, Palace, is the fact that they cost possibly £3 million and, and yeah. come from South London. And Manchester United cost... 11,000, 12,000. <laughs> yeah, 11,000, 12,000. You're only talking about the size of the club. In, in the mind, but as regards, there is no, I don't think there's an underdog today in terms of no. current form at all. Their records say that both teams are entitled to win the match and both teams could lose it today. I think it'll be very close. And of course, if you're talking about underdogs, uh, the underdogs have got a, tr a super record here in recent seasons, haven't they? They have. Wimbledon with Coventry, etc. Yeah. First timers, both those clubs were first timers, and for Crystal Palace, it's first timers as well. They're, they're, this is very important for the Crystal Palace lads because only one, really, Andy Thorne, who played with Wimbledon a couple of seasons ago, knows about this pre-match, uh, going out there, getting a feel of the surface, getting used to the atmosphere. Um, a lot of people say, well, will they freeze? Well, Coventry didn't freeze and Wimbledon didn't freeze. And I really don't expect these lads to freeze at all either. 
they're too busy to freeze because you know, their manager will have them so hyped up, uh, looking upon themselves to an extent as the less glamorous side, if not underdogs, to run until they drop for the Palace cause. I mean, that's what they did against Liverpool, and they wore them down. They would not be beaten in the end. But a very interesting point you make about picking players who've recently been injured. Going back to the 1982 World Cup when Ron Greenwood didn't start with Trevor Brookie and Kevin Keegan, two of our star players at that time, and brought them on at a point where, the, you know, where we'd already got behind. I think it's very important psychologically to play your best team first, yeah, if they've got through a reserve game, as Bob says. Don't disappoint the enemy. Put your, put your most frightening side out to start with. Then if they break down, then, then bring in the substitutes. Well, whatever, it'll be a lifetime's experience for all these Crystal Palace players today, uh, Bob, won't it? It's, um, it's just an amazing day, Des. It remains, I think, in the sporting calendar. OK, I'm a footballing man, but it is very difficult to describe. I know just leaving home today, and my wife tends to be a footballing lady, but she had a knot in her stomach. It's cup final day. There is a special thing about it. I think the stadium has become a great stadium, you know. People talk about as finding a new national stadium all seated here that i honestly believe that pitch is without equal anywhere at the yeah, moment yeah. don't you jim they have done a splendid job the pitch now is as it was admired by everyone in the world for its grass you know there's nowhere be better to find decent grass than in england um, but it did deteriorate after the horses for many many years and that's now back to its best and if you walk around the stadium it looks like it begins to look like the American stadia, you know, plenty of bars, plenty of hamburgers, hot you dogs and things for the public. Good service, in other words. Bob made the point right at the start of the programme. It's worth repeating, I think, Bob, your point about the goal mouths, because people might not, not have been with us right from the start. There's lush uh, grass, as you say, in those goal mouths, and it could be a bit slippery today. Well, uh, and plus the fact there was a little bit of uh, drizzle early on, and also they had the sprinklers on only for a short time. I've been watching very carefully. There's not much wind around there at the moment. It might have dried out a little bit, but it is so lush, Des, that it's very close to an artificial pitch, so perfect does it... It, it really is. It's a You're not going thing. on the side of artificial no, pitches I'm now. Certainly not it's doing so that, perfect, it, it's nearly artificial, Yes, you but said. when the ball is, <laughs> is struck on that today, if it's struck with anything like pace, from the goalkeeping point of view, it'll, it really will gather pace. It'll zip off there, it'll stay very low. It won't, it won't be an, an awkward bounce. Uh, I really expect a Isn't few it funny how goalkeepers, goalkeepers look they upon look what can go themselves. wrong with their, with their cause, and I think as a forward, if you hit it well, you might get a bit of help. <laughs> do, you think that, um, do you think that seasoned internationals, Brian Robson and, uh, you know, people like that, and, and, and players like Thomas and, and, and uh, that we see there, do you think that they really get up, that this is a different game, the cup final, from any other, from an international match, perhaps, or for an important, from an important league match? Do you think I, they find from, it as different a, as we think they do? Yeah. Not from a World Cup match, because I don't think there's anything more important in a player's career than playing in that competition. But I would think second to that, Bob, this is, this is next. Hmm? I think, uh, I think it is really. I think the cup final remains when you are a little boy and there are millions of little boys around the country whose dream eventually is to walk out at Wembley Stadium in May and hopefully go up and collect the gold medal. And uh, I, the years, I mean the, re the other reason behind the stadium being such a, a great arena is all the dramas that have occurred over the years. Uh, and well I didn't play in World Cup finals Jim so I think you're probably right playing for your country in a World Cup final must be super Supreme, but uh, for a one-off occasion, this matches anything in the world. I might have called Wallace Thomas just now. I think I had a mental block, did I? Yeah, I think did. Danny Wallace yeah. and yeah, Ince. Yeah. They had a shot of Danny Wallace and Ince. I personally believe they are so important to Manchester United today, Des. I really think that they are almost uh, very much a key to United playing well. The, the, pitch does in, yeah, the pitch does encourage good football, and it encourages players with pace who can take somebody on. I mean, it should be perfect for players who want to run with the ball like Wallace. I mean, the, the stage is set for a player of his ability uh, and, and like players. But uh, Palace will try. They, they're not short of skill in their players, individual people who can take on a man and lick him and start something going. I what, about the, what about the goalkeepers today? I mean, I, I tried to draw Dennis Law on that a little earlier, but he was, he was quite jokey in his response. But, I mean, Martin had, a, had that wonderful uh, semi-final 
Um, Leighton has been the subject of a little bit of criticism throughout the season. What, what do you think about I've that probably seen today? more of Nigel Martin than anybody because he's playing for Bristol Rovers. I, don't, I think Fulham only scored once against Bristol Rovers when he's been in goal and I've seen all those matches. And he is quite spectacular. He, he, he is a goalkeeper that will take your breath away. Um, and obviously, Jim Layton, you know, uh, 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 an international player, uh, must have quality. But everybody says he's suspect. <laughs> More from you in a moment. Gary O'Reilly of Crystal Palace, how does the atmosphere compare to what you expected? It's great. I mean, uh, there seems to be a lot of Crystal Palace support in here. And for only 14,000 people, I think they've done brilliantly, especially down on the approach to the stadium as well. And another goal like yours in the semi-final, that would do you nicely today? It would indeed. It would. <laughs> The team, the, the Palace team, as I understand it, the same as the semi-final with Ian Wright and David Madden on the bench. I believe so, yes. So you're a happy man at this moment, looking forward to it. A bit nervous? Yeah, a bit nervous, but uh, we, you know, got so much to concentrate on. You haven't got time for nerves. Kerry O'Reilly, thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. Well, Neil Webb, it's been quite a turnaround for you, hasn't it? Achilles uh, injury, and look as though you're out the game for a long time, and here you are, at Wembley final. Yeah, it's been a long, hard struggle to get my fitness back, and I believe now that I've done that, uh, I've got the biggest stage here in the British game to prove it. Uh, it was something that kept us going through a disastrous league form, uh, league season this year, and uh, it'd be nice if we could finish the season how we started it. How many senior games have you actually played after that six months' absence? Uh, this will be my ninth. ninth. So. Wembley has a tradition of sapping players' strengths. The, the grass is quite long. Yeah, it has that, but uh, once you get here at Wembley in, in, in the atmosphere here, no matter if it's cup final or playing for England, I mean, your fitness shouldn't really be a worry and you should be able to fly through the game because it goes very quickly. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and I've got a bit to prove to people that I am back and hopefully I can do that today. Particularly Bobby Robson? Particularly that. I'm still uh, fighting for my place in the squad to get to Italy, so that's something. That's another uh, target I've got to aim for at the end of the game. Have a good game. Thank you very much, Tony. Cheers. John Pemberton of Crystal Palace. Uh, mixed emotions for you. You were a United supporter not so long ago. Yeah, that's right. Uh, if I wouldn't have been playing here today, I'd have been still up there with them lads. Uh, it's a fantastic day, really, for everybody, isn't it? You're not going to be short of support, it doesn't look like. No, it doesn't look like. We've just been down the bottom there and uh, we didn't get a lot of tickets, but they're going to make enough noise, so uh, hopefully they can cheer us through. And for a player who spent some years in the lower divisions, it's an even bigger day, surely? Oh, of course it is, yeah. I mean, I've put around the fourth division like a lot of our uh, players have done. But... Uh, like we've got, we had uh, chances to play in the first division, and we've all took that. And uh, this is a highlight, really, of the, of the uh, whole season we've had. And Jeff Thomas, the captain, that's something you share with John, experience in the lower divisions. Oh yes. Um, to say of two years ago, ask me and John where where we'd like to be. You know, obviously we say Wembley, but to be actually turn out here for Crystal Palace today is something special for everybody. You said to me yesterday you couldn't okay. really take it in, you were there, and that's why you weren't so nervous. You take it in now? i definitely take it in, but I'm enjoying it. It's not got to me yet. You know, the nerves are obviously tingling, but I mean, before every game you get nervous, but I mean, it's, hopefully, you know, everything goes well for us today. Try and enjoy it, both of you. Thanks oh, well, very much thank indeed. You. All the best. Well, Mark Robbins, uh, the decision from Alec Ferguson is that you take the substitutes shirt. Are you disappointed? No, not really. I'm just glad to be involved in the 13. I uh, just want to make the most of the day and hope we win. Have you been at Wembley before? I have, yes. Uh, in 1986, uh, I was here with England, uh, or Lily Show, mm -hmm. the 16s. Uh, we won 3-2, so hopefully we can continue to win. It's a bit of a big occasion today, isn't it? What are your feelings when you walk out here now? It's unbelievable. I mean, you've just got to experience it for yourself, and it's really my first time playing in front of such a big crowd, so hopefully everything will go well. A lot of players do freeze on this occasion. It's a bit awe-inspiring, isn't it? When you first walk out, it is, but uh, I think once you get playing, uh, it all seems to go away because you're concentrating on the game. I suppose your dream last night was coming on a sub and scoring the winning goal, was it? Not really, no, I don't tend to dream about things, so uh, i just try and uh, keep things off my mind until the actual day. Final thought, how many members of your family are here? I think there's about 24. Yeah. <laughs> I've only got 24 tickets this year. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day, Mark. All right, thanks a lot. Andy Thorne of Crystal Palace, how does it compare to two years ago with Wimbledon? Yeah, it's great, great day. We can take a lot more in this time and the fans have been brilliant and we're just looking forward to it. And do you have deep down any fears at all? Um, not really. I mean, if we go about our business, then we should be OK, you know? And what, what are the, fo the folks saying to you? You've got family in the, in the crowd here? I've just been looking for them, but I can't find them. Uh, 
they'll probably give him some stick afterwards, but no, as I say, it's going to be a great day and, uh, and we're going to turn in a good performance. Huh? And the important thing is to take it all in. That's right. I mean, don't rush about. And, you know, hopefully we can enjoy ourselves. Andy Thorne, all the best. Thank you very much indeed. Good luck to Newcastle tomorrow as well. I hope they get a result. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Well, he's done it once already with Wimbledon.